urethra. So it can be considered as a UTI type of um, UTI or a part of UTI. But generally, when you think of urethritis, we consider it as a sexually transmitted disease because um, it is commonly transmitted through sexual contact. And urethritis, based on the uh, uh, sexual transmission, it is uh, basically grouped as two types, gonococcal and non-gonococcal uh, non urethritis. So in urethritis is uh, caused by the gonococci, Hesita gonorrhea, then it is gonococcal urethritis. And when it is caused by other causes, it is called non-gonococcal urethritis. And non-gonococcal urethritis, uh, it is um, also considered as STI and it is commonly caused by uh, the um, organism Chlamydia trachomatis. However, rather than uh, uh, only infective cause sometimes uh, it can be caused by um, other factors as well. So you know, when it is caused by other trauma or uh, some uh, instrumentation or some irritants, then it can be uh, urethritis, non gonococcal urethritis. It can be uh, not only uh, because of the uh, sexually, uh, not because of sexual transmission. So sometimes uh, non gonococcal urethritis may not be an STI, but commonly considering non gonococcal urethritis is a sexually transmitted disease and commonly found in men. It is more common in men uh, than in female. The ratio is considered as 3 is to 1. And gonococci, gonococcal infection, and non gonococcal urethritis it can occur simultaneously. So they often coexist together. Okay. Now the causative agent of non gonococcal urethritis. So the most common cause is chlamydia trachomatis. Around 30 to 40% 40, uh, 40 of the cases of non gonococcal urethritis is because of chlamydia trachomatis that is strain D to K. So there are different strains of chlamydia trachomatis, one just causing the trachoma and another is oculogenital group uh, that is D to K uh, that uh, causes uh, genital chlamydiasis and in uh, infants or in neonates born from the infected mother can produce ophthalmia neonatrum. Other causes include ureplasma, urelyticum, mycoplasma, genitalium. So these are some uh, common bacterial cause that produces non gonococcal urethritis and the most common being chlamydia trachomatis. Some other causes of non gonococcal urethritis include trichomonas, Vaginalis, that is a parasitic cause, and viral causes can include herpes simplex virus and adenovirus. So these are some of the positive versions of non gonococcal urethritis that can be transmitted by sexual contact. Sometimes urethritis um, can be non-infective, so it can be because of uh, trauma, or uh, sometimes because of the trauma itself. There can be strictures in the urethra that can also result in urethritis or uh, catheterization or sometimes other instrumentation can produce urethritis or some chemicals like the soaps, detergents, etc. can also produce urethritis. So these are the non-infective mechanical causes. And symptoms, it is similar to that of uh, gonococcal urethritis. So there's a um, common symptom will be discharge, that is the urethral discharge and uh, burning and uh, painful micturition, uh, pain, irritation around the urethra and itching around the urethra. So those are the common symptoms. Both in male and female, patient will have a symptom similar to that of UTI, like um, increase in frequency of urination, burning micturition or painful micturition and uh, discharge, urethral discharge along with uh, pain and irritation around the urethra. And in case of uh, male, if the disease progresses from the urethra, it can uh, produce epididymitis, proctatitis, that is towards the upper and genital organs. And in case of female, again, if it uh, progresses upwards, it can produce solvicitis, endometritis. I mean, it can sometimes even uh, include the fallopian tube, uh, ovary. So patient uh, can have PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. So if patient uh, is having PID, the common symptom will be uh, vaginal discharge, lower abdominal pain, and sometimes uh, even intermenstrual bleeding. So in urethritis, common symptom will be 
discharge from the urethra and some patient will present with discharge from the vagina either because the patient is confused that uh, this is having a discharge from the urethra or vagina or patient is having uh, infection of the uh, endometrium or the cervix so patient can have discharge from the vagina itself and patient will present uh, burning maturation, painful maturation, increase in frequency, etc. <coughs> and if patient is having PID, she will have lower back pain with um, vaginal abnormal vaginal discharge and uh, intermenstrual bleeding can also be present. So these are the few symptoms. And uh, as compared to the uh, gonococcal infection, the discharge is uh, thin and scanty. Sometimes the discharge may even be absent in case of non-gonococcal uh, non urethritis. Sometimes only mm, there's no discharge or just crusting around the urethra can be present. However, in case of uh, gonococcal infection, um, the discharge is thick and profuse. Large amount of discharge is present. And as I mentioned, in case of male, <coughs> the infection can progress and produce um, uh, infection of the prostate gland, the prostatitis or uh, epididymitis. And in case of uh, female, it produces PID, and PID can result in infertility. If it is, uh, if it occurs in pregnancy, it can uh, result in abortion, or preterm labor, or low birth weight, or neonatal infection. So these are some of the complications that can be associated with gonococcal or uh, non-gonococcal urethritis. <laughs> now for the diagnosis. So this patient will have, have a discharge. So the sample, uh, common sample collected will be the discharge. So the uh, examination of the genital area is one. Which the patient is having uh, discharge. The uh, urethral opening uh, may be tender and uh, red. And we collect the sample. And if, uh, in case of sense, in case of uh, non conocopal urethritis, the discharge is scanty or sometimes the discharge may not even be present. Uh, we can uh, we can collect the urine sample as well, and uh, the first voided urine is collected, and then the sediment is mm, examined. And for the discharge, we prepare the smear and observe it under the microscope. Uh, if the smear shows more than five parcels per high power field. In a minimum of five fields. So, if you absorb around uh, five fields in 40x, and there are in each of the fields there are more than five parcels, patient is having the symptom, but we cannot uh, see the nasal gonorrhea. We do not see the bacteria. Then uh, we suspect patient is having urethritis because of other non gonococcal causes. Then we progress accordingly. <laughs> so, the common causative agent is chlamydia. Trachomatis and chlamydia trachomatis, though it is a um, uh, bacteria, however, it is considered as an obligate intracellular parasite since it has the features of bacteria that is, it has both DNA and RNA, cell wall, and ribosomes. It responds to antibiotics and it divides by binary fusion. It is considered as a as the bacteria. <clears throat> and the one that uh, produces um, non gonococcal urethritis is the strain P2K, others A, B, C. It produces trachoma and another L1, L2, L3, it produces lymphoblastoma granuloma bendurum. That is again a STD. Now this chlamydia trachomatis, it has uh, two forms, elementary body and the reticulate body. Elementary body is the infective form and reticulate body is the multiplying or the duplicative form. <coughs> so elementary body, uh, it is the uh, infective form of uh, chlamydia. Though it is uh, uh, considered as a gram negative uh, bacteria, but however, it has a different structure. So, we consider the elementary body as the infective form and uh, reticulate body as the duplicative form. And elementary body, it uh, attaches to the cell, then it is um, engulfed. So, uh, the elementary body enters into the cell, and in the cell, then uh, it starts dividing, and then it uh, divides within the cells and and it uh, develops the reticulate body. So the reticulate body developed inside the cell contains large number of elementary body. And at maturation, 
uh, it is released and therefore the elementary uh, bodies are released so the cycle continues and this um, reticulate body with the elementary bodies inside acts as the intracytoplasmic organelle so intracytoplasmic uh, this is the intracytoplasmic structure that we can see in, uh, in the um, microscopic examination of the smear prepared so if you find this then we can uh, make out the infection is because of the chlamydia so therefore uh, we prepare the smear from the uh, discharge and we can see the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies the elementary bodies within the reticulate bodies are the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies and sometimes we can um, see this structure as uh, um, uh, covering or trying to cover the nucleus so the larger structure is the uh, inclusion body and the smaller is the nucleus the redis or the orange one is the nucleus and sometimes you can see that it is uh, trying to engulf or covering the nucleus so you can see this as helmet cells <clears throat> and if we have the culture facility we can perform the uh, culture so these are obligate intracellular parasites so we cannot culture them in artificial media so it requires the tissue culture or egg culture so for tissue culture we can uh, choose this macro or hella cells and in egg culture so we culture in the yolk sac of around six to eight days for chicken embryo. Another is uh, we can uh, detect the antigen. So antigen detection by you know, commonly by immunofluorescent method or LI. So we can prepare the smear and, and then again uh, treat it with the monoclonal antibodies uh, with tagged with the fluorescent. Uh, substance and then we can see under the fluorescent microscope so we can detect the bacteria by immunofluorescent technique then in that way another is the common method is detection of the antibodies so igm antibodies and later igg antibodies so igm antibodies commonly by the complement fixation test can be a common method so one is the microscopic examination if we are able to detect the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies and that will help uh, to Say that the infection is because of chlamydia trachomatis. Another method, um, another common method is detection of the antibodies by complement fixation test. And if we have the facility, obviously we can do the molecular test or PCR. So you can see the cytoplasmic body in this. Uh, the nucleus is the larger one, and other two are the uh, cytoplas intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. And if you are suspecting the patient is having arthritis and uh, you do not, uh, you see the postals, you do not see the gonococci and uh, enzyme sustain. Uh, if you uh, see this structure, you can make out the infection is probably because of chlamydia trachomatis. Uh, with limb sustain and we can see the in uh, intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies and uh, next is if you have facility you can perform the culture macro uh, or hella cell culture and egg culture and detection of the antigen by immunofluorescent and ELISA technique and detection of the antibody another is the molecular test so this is the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies the two smaller ones are the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies and the larger one is the nucleus. Sometimes um, the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies can be larger and you know, the nucleus can appear smaller. Now, chlamydia trachomatis, uh, sorry, chlamydia uh, urethritis, it can be, uh, it can occur as an association with gonorrhea or it can present as post gonococcal urethritis and sometimes it can occur as Hitch's syndrome. So, commonly, uh, gonorrhea and uh, chlamydial urethritis can coexist together. Therefore, mm -hmm. uh, when you are treating the patient of uh, gonorrhea, we can treat the uh, patient for chlamydial urethritis simultaneously. 
because gonorrhea has a incubation period of uh, around two to five days. So it has a shorter incubation period as uh, compared to the chlamydial urethritis that is around uh, one, uh, two to three weeks. So uh, when patient presents with the symptoms, it is because of the um, gonorrhea and we treat the infection. But later again, um, since patient is not treated existing uh, chlamydial urethritis as it has an uh, incubation period of around two to three weeks that is a longer incubation period so patient will present again with urethritis at a later date uh, and that will be because of uh, chlamydial urethritis so that is post gonococcal urethritis so it is better to treat uh, patient having gonorrhea for chlamydial urethritis as well so we can choose the drug doxycycline because it will target both the infections and the drug of choice for gonorrhea is cephalosporin. So just for gonorrhea, we can use uh, cephalosporin, but if you want to target both, we can use doxycycline or um, drugs of the same group. And uh, sometimes uh, chlamydial urethritis can occur as a future syndrome. That is a triad of urethritis, conjunctivitis and arthritis. The for treatment, Treatment for non gonococcal urethritis is uh, we can choose uh, cephalosporins or azithromycin, doxycycline, uh, sorry, uh, gonococcal non gonococcal urethritis, doxycycline, azithromycin, and ethromycin. So, this group of uh, drug can be used for non gonococcal urethritis. So, these are uh, uh, antibiotics for atypical infections. Uh, gonococcal urethritis and non-gonococcal urethritis have uh, similar symptoms. However, there's a slight difference. That is, incubation period uh, of gonococcal urethritis is shorter and non-gonococcal urethritis is longer. Mm, and symptoms, is rap there's a rapid onset of symptoms um, and symptom is generally severe in case of gonococcal urethritis. And in non-gonococcal urethritis, uh, symptoms mm, uh, is slower in onset and less severe. And both of them will have uh, features of UTI. So burning maturation, increase in frequency or painful maturation. However, in case of non-gonococcal urethritis, uh, patient will, uh, rather than having uh, burning sensation, they will complain of more of uh, like painful maturation. There's, that is a pain um, of a wound. So patient may have a sharp stinging pain in the urethra. And another uh, difference is the discharge is more profuse and thick in case of gonococcal urethritis as compared to non-gonococcal urethritis. So in non-gonococcal urethritis, the discharge is scanty and semi-coprolent. And fever is more common in gonococcal Urethritis. However, they can uh, coexist together. So, if we are treating the patient for gonococcal urethritis, it is better to treat the patient for non-gonococcal urethritis as well. 